Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am Woo Sang Shim, uh, introduced by the chair. Uh, today's topic uh, is maritime mobile services based on high bandwidth technology. Uh, actually, I have presented uh, about initial step of uh, high bandwidth communication named as LT Maritime. I have presented that uh, related to the uh, plan of deployment. And uh, 2020, I also have shown uh, the deployment status of LT Maritime network and uh, some verification result of the uh, performance of that uh, system. Now, at Digital SC 2021, uh, I'm going to uh, show and present about a strong and concrete need uh, of high bandwidth communication in maritime uh, field. Okay, this is a uh, content. I will follow that. First one is maritime mobile service. I'm sorry to make you see that uh, very complicated picture. Uh, this picture is uh, Korean uh, frequency allocations uh, regulated by the Korean government. Uh, I'm asking you uh, to find some check marks. I have add check mark for the, uh, the frequency of maritime mobile services in current situation. You can see that the frequency band from uh, three kilohertz to 3,000 gigahertz. Where are the check mark of maritime mobile services. Yes, right. There are only in lower part of the frequencies. So at this time, maritime mobile services only use the lower part of the frequency allocations only. ITU uh, have defined uh, maritime mobile services as like this. A mobile service between coastal station and ship stations, or between ship stations, or between associated onboard uh, communication stations. All of these uh, uh, already include all activity of maritime field. But we only use the lower part of the frequency allocations only. Next one is high bandwidth. I think uh, I need to explain some more in detail about the high bandwidth. Yes, this term, high bandwidth, was widely used uh, in the memory industry, like, uh, you know, that DRAM or DDR RAM, something like that. So if we have the high frequency we can get wide bandwidth and very high speed communication. But high, high frequency cannot propagate long distance. But we have to find some appropriate point between the high frequency and the coverage. That is the uh, technical issues to find high bandwidth communication in maritime mobile services. These, are, these pictures uh, represent a strong need of high bandwidth technology in the communication in maritime. You know, uh, you already know that the e-navigation, uh, many e-navigation services uh, are currently requiring many uh, communication capability. How about in mass, a maritime autonomous surface ship? If they want, uh, if mass 
mass ships uh, want to navigate safely, they require many information and many sensor data from around. How do, how do to, how to implement that communication environment? So I believe that the mass ship requires strongly require the very high speed network between ship to ship environment. How about in digitalization of ship? Uh, we have uh, seen um, several presentation about digitalization. Okay, uh, let's find some uh, private um, trend and cases of uh, strong requirement of private uh, of high bandwidth technology. Uh, this is uh, some figures. These are some figures from uh, some white paper 2019. First one is 249%. That means the amount of increase of data generation per vessel compared to the level of 2019, 249% increasement of ship data will be grow in maybe in three years to 2024. Next figure is 89%. This figure means uh, the ship send some data in a day, but 89% of data should not be real time. So 89% could be a non real time data. So only 11 point of data transmission require real time or almost real time. So 47% of data could be transmitted by daily and the rest of them by less frequently transmitted. The next one is 60%. Uh, this means the probability a ship could locate within the coverage of mobile communication. A ship of uh, the 60% of ship is navigating the globally. They must be, they could be or must be in port or coastal waters. That is, many portion, many parts of ships are navigating in the vicinity of the land. Please see these pictures. Uh, this picture uh, uh, was derived from the AIS uh, automatic identification system data, global, global data. So look at the color uh, density of colors. Many ships navigating in the vicinity of the land. How about this picture? I think you can get some insight more clearly. Here is an American. There is a Europe. There is Korea and Japan and China. The very dense uh, red uh, reveals the, the traffic volume. How about uh, the private company's trend? Uh, I think you already know the Inmarsat, the very uh, big uh, satellite communication provider. They already have the product pro portfolio uh, with, with, uh, K with the satellite and LTE fusion uh, system. Another uh, example of private company, the Castor. Uh, they claim the seamless communication between satellite and LTE.
And the next one is uh, about the LT Maritime. I think you're wondering if you uh, can use the LT service in the Maritime. I already have, uh, have presented these pictures maybe in one year ago. But this is a proven case of LTE Maritime. This system can provide LTE service up to 100 kilometers from coastline. The left uh, picture shows the RSRP, a reference signal received power. The right one is uh, represent for SINR, a signal to interference plus noise ratio. So whole picture shows the, the successful uh, LTE quality up to 100 kilometers from coastline. So how do we make this successful result? Actually, we have to get, we have to have 500 altitude stations in order to get the line of sight 100 kilometers. But whole Korean coastline do not have enough high altitude mountains, but we can make it with uh, using some antenna modification and using some technical cell planning in addition to the some uh, know-how of our uh, uh, of our company and research institute so you, we can get uh, 46 or 22 or 23 mega bps in in the ocean even maybe in uh, 100 kilometers or 50 kilometers from the coastline finally I will show you about the further direction of our crystal for high bandwidth maritime communication. We already have developed LT Maritime as an example of maritime ship to network. Uh, somebody wonder about uh, sh the terminology ship to network or ship to air, ship to X. Uh, please think, uh, please, uh, think uh, the, the terminology of V2X on land. So in maritime situation, a ship have to communicate with the land, but also require the direct communication ship to ship, even ship to air, like a drone, even ship to pe pe uh, people, or even ship to infrastructure like ace to navigation. The frequency allocations or communication technology should be developed based on the close cooperation by the uh, cooperation between the uh, international organization related to them. Finally, uh, I would like to conclude my presentation with my epilogue. Uh, whenever I heard smart, this terminology smart, <laughs> many people think only almighty things. But I believe smart doesn't have to mean almighty, but appropriate. So this appropriate communication means to provide it seamlessly by appropriate system on required time at required waters. So that is the reason why we develop, we could develop or should develop the high bandwidth communication in maritime field. Thank you for your attention.